I'm Eric Wielander, welcome to my channel. Apple Home automations are a lot easier than you might think. You don't need lots of fancy extra boxes or programming languages to make them happen. And it's always where I start when I'm thinking about a new automation, because if you can fit your automation into these simple constraints, it makes it really easy to set up and maintain over time. So an automation in Apple Home just comes down to a cause and effect. So when this happens, then do this thing in my home, like turn on the lights or turn the thermostat to a particular level or whatever makes sense for your automation. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can set this up for yourself in Apple Home, as well as some of my favorite automations that I have like this. Now it's important to keep in mind that in order to really take advantage of Apple Home automations, you need to have what's called a Home Hub or a HomeKit Hub. So that's just a HomePod mini, a full-size HomePod or an Apple TV somewhere on your home network. And that's gonna be the brains running these automations, especially when you aren't home. So here in the home app, you create an automation by tapping the plus button at the top and then choosing add automation. Then from there, there's a lot of different options here and you might see some suggestions of automations, which I tend to ignore and just create my own. For this first automation, we're gonna focus on the time of day. So tap on a time of day occurs, and this is for our cause in the automation. And then we're gonna say in this case that we want it to be sunset. And there's this option at the bottom for people, which we'll talk about later on in this video. So I'm gonna hit next. And then you can choose what you want to have as your effect. I have a lot of stuff in my smart home. Yours might not be quite as set up at this point. But I'm gonna scroll down here to the front yard. And in this case, we want the porch light and the driveway light to turn on at sunset. So I'm gonna hit next. And then we have this automation here on the screen that shows at sunset daily, we want the front yard porch light and driveway light to turn off, but that's not right because right now as I'm making this automation, it's the daytime and my outdoor lights are off, but I want them to actually be on. So you can just tap the little icon here and then you'll see them change to be on. And this means that at sunset daily, the effect of that cause will be that our lights outside will turn on. Now you can also add something right in here to turn it off after a certain number of hours. Let's say you want it on for the first four hours of the evening. You could also set up a separate automation to turn them off when the sun rises in the morning or turn them off at a specific time every night, let's say 11 p.m. And then when you hit done, it'll add that automation to your home. And then once it's added to your home, you can find all your automations in the automation tab on the bottom of the home app. And then if we tap into our sunset daily automation, if you wanna keep this around, but maybe you don't actually want it running right now, uh, you can in disable this automation by just turning off that switch at the top. And I do this for a bunch of automations that I set up, but maybe I don't need at the moment. So then you can disable them and they just won't run until you enable them back here in the home app. And then if you don't need this automation at all anymore, you wanna clean up a bunch of your old automations, which I probably need to do, you can choose delete this automation and then it will actually delete it from your smart home. Now, of course, making automations when the sun sets or a particular time of day is great, but you might also wanna automate things based on what people are doing inside of your home. Let's say like opening doors or walking down a hallway. And this is where smart home sensors come into play. Now, there are lots of different types of sensors and I've talked about many of them here on this channel. And some of the bigger categories are things like present sensors and motion sensors. But the one I think that's best to get started with are contact sensors, also known as door and window sensors. These are sensors that register as closed if they're really close, like less than an inch together and then register as open when they separate. So you can mount something like the Acara P2 sensor, which is a great one you can add straight into Apple Home. You don't even need to use other Acara products and it works over thread. And then you just mount this on your door and then as you open the door, the contact sensor comes apart and then it registers the door opening and then you close the door and the contact sensor comes back together. So these events of opening and closing are things we can use as a cause 
to then automate an effect. Now for this automation, we're actually gonna show a different way to get to the same screen, just so you understand kind of the layout of the home app. So if I go to the particular room where the sensor is located in the home app, in this case, the entryway, then I'll be able to see the sensors at the top that are specifically in that room. And you'll see here at the top, there's a door closed because as you can see on the camera right here, the closet door in my entryway is closed. So I tap on that sensor and it brings up this panel and shows me the automations I have specifically for that sensor. Now, you might see some suggested automations from the home app. Uh, again, I tend to avoid those and set them up custom myself, but feel free to try them. You'll notice here that I have this suggested one of when the entryway closet door sensor opens, turn the lights on in the entryway, and well, that's a great suggestion from the home app, I turned it off because I actually have multiple different lights in the entryway and only one of which I want turned on by this automation. So if I go in here and hit add automation, if I'm creating a new one, and so then I choose opens or closes. Let's say in this case, I wanna do the open automation. So when the entryway closet door sensor opens, that's our cause, then we go here and choose an effect. So I found my closet lights here in the entryway. I'm gonna hit next. And you'll notice my closet lights are off. So it just like the last automation, it grabbed the current state of those closet lights and put it in this automation. In this case, we want them to turn on. So I'm gonna tap that little icon for the lights. It'll set it so then as the entryway closet door sensor opens, turn on the lights in the closet. So you can tap done and add this automation to your smart home. And then I can create a similar automation for when the entryway closet door closes, turn off the lights in the closet. And then I never have to worry about if someone left the closet lights on in the entryway. Now, when I was talking about the sunset automation earlier, I mentioned that we would get to talking about this people parameter that you can use here and other places in the home app. And this is one of the really powerful features I love about Apple Home and why I choose it over other smart home automation platforms. And that's because I have an iPhone in my pocket and then my family also uses Apple devices. And so as I leave home and come back home, Apple knows my location and they can use that in a secure and private way to also help with my home automation. So for this automation, we'll go back to the plus button at the top of the home app and choose add automation. Now you could do some automations based on when people arrive and when people leave. And I've tried that, but usually if we leave the house after sunset, we can set up how we want the lights to be and we're sort of aware of it. The problem I was trying to cover with this automation is when we're gone out and about and while we're out and about, the sun sets, then you want the home to just automatically appear like people are still home, even if you aren't. So that's where you wanna select a time of day occurs. And in this case, of course, it would be sunset. And then under people, which I talked about earlier, then you're gonna say when nobody is home. So when all the people who are part of your home in Apple Home are gone, then we wanna run this automation. And then here, we're gonna choose a scene. Now, I've created a scene called Home Away, which has a bunch of different lights around our home that light up to then appear as if we're home when we're away. And for something like this, it's a little bit more complex automation. You can go ahead and add a custom name here that'll show in the home app to sort of jog your memory about what this is about. So appear home well away. And then you can hit done and save it to your smart home. Now you can get really fancy with these automations that add a condition into it. And a lot of folks in the smart home community call them conditional automation and I'll be making videos in the future going into more depth on conditional automations because there's a lot of different layers there that you can explore. But in the meantime, you might've noticed this home away scene I had in the last demo. And I think scenes are actually the most important feature of Apple Home, just for using your home on a regular basis, but then also for setting up things like these automations. And I made a video all about that, link somewhere here on the screen. Thanks again so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.